Hi, and welcome back to Digital Devices Lab videos. Today we're going to talk about Lab 8. We're going to work with adders and subtractors. So far in class, we've been dealing with lots of digital devices. We've dealt with combinational logic. We've dealt with flip-flops, and we've learned how to design controllers. And controllers take us to a point, uh, but we need to move into more complex systems. And so in order to do that, we need to start designing and utilizing data path components. We know that we're moving into <clears throat> data that is more than one bit wide. Multi-bit wide buses are used. And so we need multi-bit functionality available to us. And so we're going to look at the next couple labs, some of the combinational and sequential building blocks that are available to us as data path components. The first one we want to look at is the adder subtractor. And so we need to um, basically uh, create a four bit adder and subtractor. I'd like for you to go through your book and read example 411. If you um, start with the adder and subtractor sections in chapter four, then you'll begin to understand how we design adders and subtractors <clears throat> for the lab. Um, after you've checked out that example, you should go ahead and open up a project or create a project called Add Subtract. We're going to have a level that's going to be used with our simulator called Add Subtract Data Path as listed here. Add underscore sub underscore data path. <clears throat> and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to um, <clears throat> look at um, some of our designs. We want to go ahead and add a <clears throat> um, a, an LPM symbol, okay, and the LPM symbol that we want we can find under the libraries, and so this is one of the mega functions, and we're now working with arithmetic operations, and so we're going to scroll down and we're going to find the LPM, the parameterized. This will allow us to choose what size we want, and so this is the device that we want to use today. We're basically just going to take a look at this device and utilize it. Once we've added that to our um, schematic, then we can go ahead and right click and come down to um, properties. And that will allow us to make some changes. We want to go ahead and change some of the parameters. Notice that we want to have a four bit wide adder subtractor. So we're going to, uh, we're going to change uh, the value of the width to four. Okay. And whenever you have um, a multi-bit bus, uh, you're probably going to have to add some delay, okay? And what this does is it adds some flip-flops. We've talked about that in class in order to keep everything synchronized. And so for this small adder subtractor, we can get by with a delay of one clock cycle. Notice that we talk about the output latency. That's how slow we've slowed the system down by this particular device. A lot of times when you're looking at digital devices, you'll read about the latency. And this is the number of clock cycles that are required for this particular function. We call that pipelining to add these extra flip-flops to maintain uh, synchronization. <clears throat> the other um, values, the other parameters in this um, adder subtractor, we're just going to use the default, so we don't need to change any of that. Okay, as mentioned, we're going to have a four bit adder subtractor, so you're going to have to add some um, inputs. And so the input names that we're using are A and B, and those are set up as a bus. We've talked about buses before, these multi bit uh, values that are being used. And so we have four bits for A and four bits for B, which we can actually put into the data inputs. So we have the data input for A, we have the data input for B. We have to also set up some of the um, the other inputs. We're going to use switches for asynchronous clear, for clock, for carry in, and for our functionality choice of add subtract. So you set those up as switches and then go ahead and tie your clock enable to VCC. <clears throat> for outputs we have our 4-bit bus output of sum <clears throat> and so notice that's hooked up to ports as well S three through zero, just as in the example. And then we're also going to use output values or output ports for carry out and overflow. <clears throat> so that should uh, do it for this schematic 
that you need for this lab. Okay, so once you've done that, you can go ahead and save it and you can run the test bench and the test bench should work. After you've done that, go ahead and create a higher level <clears throat> using the debouncers for the switches. You can check out the <clears throat> lab assignment <clears throat> to determine what the pin assignments and the naming conventions are for the lab. Notice that on the top level, I've used switches 7 through 4 for A, switches 3 through 0 for B. I've used switch 8 for carry-in, switch 9 for asynchronous clear. We want to use one of the push-button switches for add and subtract, and we're going to use the internal clock. For outputs, we have our sum 3 through 0 on LEDs 3 through 0. We have carry out on LED 4, and we have overflow on LED 5. <clears throat> okay, one thing I need to tell you is the add subtract um, works so that if the value is 1, the functionality is add. And if the value is 0, the functionality is subtract. So that is a little bit different from your example in the book, but that is one thing that you should know. Remember that the push button switches, when they're not pushed, they are uh, floating high. And so when they are not pushed, the functionality would be the add. <clears throat> okay. And so once you've set that up, then you can uh, go ahead and create your top level. You've created a symbol for your su add subtract data path and you've added the debounce switches for all of the inputs except for clock. Do not add a debouncer for the clock. Remember, this will slow down your system one clock cycle, which is fine. And then we have buffers for our outputs, just um, <clears throat> output buffers for that. <clears throat> as far as um, the, the QSF, okay, the QSF is basically just set up using those names. Uh, you can check out the QSF for the names um, if you're confused, or you can use the Google page. Right. Same names here. Notice the switches are not set up as a bus for the top level. The LEDs are not set up as buses for the top level. Just my choice when I set up the QSF files. <clears throat> okay, and so that should take you through um, Lab 8, and it should be fairly straightforward. Uh, you will have to do some testing using your switches and um, fill out a couple forms that will have to be turned in in the lab. So expect to do a little bit of test work uh, in the lab. Okay, have a great day.